Hello, lovely speaker fam. Welcome to I Speak Organized. In my hands, I have, I always forget to put on chapstick every time I film these videos and then I go back and look at it and I, I'm like, why do I look like I've spent the last five years living outside in the desert? In my hands, I have a really wonderful children's organizing book written by a member of my blogging organizers group. It is called Susie's Messy Room, and I'm gonna read it to you. If you have little kids, or even if you are just looking for the simplest, most basic ways to get yourself on the right track in your organizing journey, then stick around and let's get into the book. Oh my God, look how organized my house is. Moisturized lips are happening. Okay, welcome back speaker fam. I help hardworking families and professionals. <laughs> welcome back to I Speak Organized. If you don't know me, my name is Melanie and I'm your professional organizer and productivity consultant. I help hardworking families and professionals find form in their space and purpose for every phase of life. I make new videos every week about organizing in your home and productivity practices. So if that's your jam, definitely go ahead and hit the subscribe button. All you have to do is hit the little circle icon of my face at the end of the video, and that will make you an official member of the speaker fam. So today we're gonna be reading this book. It's a children's book about organizing. Susie is a typical active five-year-old little girl. She loves playing with her toys in her room and sometimes creates a real mess. I mean, who doesn't? If, whether you're five or 505, that's what happens. Especially for those of you who have little kids, this book is fantastic as a way to introduce the concepts of organization to them when you're starting on the journey of trying to help your kids get involved in responsibilities, chores, picking up after themselves, that sort of thing. It's a really quick, easy read. It has super simple and effective concepts that come directly from professional organizers and it will be really, really helpful. Without further ado, Let's get into reading the book. This is Susie's Messy Room, written by Diana N. Quintana and Jonda S. BT. I really hope that I didn't just butcher your names, so I apologize in advance if I did, because that's something I would do. If it were Susie's Clean Room, this wouldn't be a very exciting book. <laughs> My name is Susie, and I am five years old, and she's got some really sweet curly blonde hair and blue eyes. This is my family. I have a mother and father and an older brother, Joe. Joe is eight years old and he's got some sweet Jimmy Neutron hair. So the hair situation, it's going good. Well done, well done. This is my room. See, she's got her bed here. She, it doesn't really look messy yet, but uh, let's turn the page and see what happens. <gasps> I have lots of fun playing in my room. Sometimes I have so much fun playing in my room that all my toys, dolls, puzzles, and stuffed animals get mixed up together. Well, isn't that just so frustrating and common? Then my mother says, pick up your room. Oh boy, looks like Susie's starting to enter into a bit of an existential crisis moment here. What do I do when my mother says, pick up your room? I sit in the middle of the bed and cry because I'm so little and the mess in my room is so big. I, I feel you on this. When you look at the project as a whole, it is incredibly overwhelming and that's why nobody wants to clean the room. So you're not alone, Susie. But what do I do when my mother says, pick up your clothes? I play the seek and sort game. I find all my dirty clothes and put them in the laundry basket. Then I find all my dress up clothes and put them in the dress up basket. I put my clean clothes away on the shelves in my closet. What do I do when my mother says, 
pick up your books. I find my books from all over the room. Some are under my bed, some are on my bed. I put them from all over my room on the bookcase. I don't know how books end up underneath the bed with the little ones. My daughter's books end up under the bed too and I just, I just am curious how that happens. What do I do when my mother says, put your dolls and the doll clothes away? I pick up my dolls and I put them in the chair on the toy shelf. I line up the shoes on the next toy shelf and then I put their clothes in the doll's trunk. What do I do when my mother says, pick up the puzzles? I find my puzzle boards and match up their pieces and then I put them on the toy shelf. What do I do when my mother says, pick up your stuffed animals? I put my three favorite stuffed animals on my bed and then I toss the rest in the animal hammock in the corner of my room. I laugh because it's too full. Some of my animals fall out of the hammock and land back on the floor. I legit thought this was gonna turn into a potty training moment because <laughs> she kind of looks like she has to use the bathroom, but nope, she's just laughing. What do I do when my mother says, I think you may have too many stuffed animals now. Why don't you pick out 10 to give to some other children to love? Uh-oh. This could go either really well or not so well. I give a big sigh. That makes me sad. I love all my stuffed animals. Which ones am I going to give away? It's a good question, but I bet mom has an answer. I ask my mother, if I choose eight of the larger stuffed animals, would that be okay? My mother smiles and says, yes, wow, bargaining. We don't give these, these little ones of ours enough credit sometimes, I think. I get one of my mother's laundry baskets and I put a soft towel at the bottom to make a little bed. How cute. Then I choose eight of my stuffed animals, give them a kiss goodbye, and lay them in the basket to go to their new home. It's like moms with dropping their kids off at college kind of already dreading that moment and crying inside a bit. My mother says that some other boy or girl will love them just as much as I do. Now my other stuffed animals have room in the hammock. What do I do when my mother says, you have done such a wonderful job in your room. Where would you like to go for a treat? I laugh and say, let's go to the ice cream shop where they put sprinkles, whipped cream, and cherries on top of my ice cream. She knows how to live. This is, this is good stuff right here. Okay, I'm gonna pause for a second because I know how us mamas get and I feel like it's important to note that I don't believe the author is trying to say that you need to, you know, stage a parade or a giant ice cream Sunday party every single time your child completes a chore at home. I think that the overall idea is to make sure that they feel valued for the work that they've done. And it can be something really simple like reading their favorite book, spending a little quality time with them before they go to bed, something really easy and simple. And that's it. So before we all get carried away, I think that's really what that means. And that's the end. You gotta check this out here. This phone, I don't think most kids have any idea what that phone is. The circular dial pad, do you think any of them would know how to use it? If you're watching this with your kids, kids, class is dismissed. You can go off and go practice cleaning up your room. Parents, you are not off the hook because I have note to parents to read to you. This will kind of give you an idea of the principles that are being broken down and taught to you and to your kids so that you have a really good understanding of what it is that you're imparting to your kids in terms of organization. So it says, this book was written for parents and children to share. The authors took some basic organizational strategies. Break projects down into small manageable steps, sort like with like, cull collections, assign a place or a home for belongings, and reward for jobs completed because who doesn't want a treat for doing something that they didn't want to do, that they know they have to do. The author then applied these strategies to the common tasks of picking up a room. People are often overwhelmed when given what to them seems like a large project. 
The first step is to break the project down into small manageable steps. That is productivity 101, people. Study the illustrations. Notice that Susie did not do a perfect job. You'll see that there are some dolls and clothes not perfectly put away and that the bookcase is a bit untidy. Still, Susie did a great job for her age and her efforts are accepted and praised. So it's more about done than perfection with the kids. But you know that this book is written by serious professionals who have their systems down, they know what they're talking about, and they make it as easy as possible to implement and stick to, even for the youngest members of your family as young as five years old. So I hope that that helps give you an idea of how to get started with your little ones or even how to just get started yourself if you are the type of person that becomes... What was that? <laughs> Sorry, there was a terrifying noise outside and I was getting prepared to put my mama dukes up. <sighs> Thanks for watching and again, please consider subscribing to this channel if you are interested in learning some more tips and tricks from a professional organizer like myself. I make new videos every week. Next week's video is gonna be a makeup organizing tutorial, so if that is something that you are in need of learning about, then tune in next time. I hope you all have a wonderful day, and I will see you in the next video. Bye.